So let's talk about the little vampire, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary this month. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to y'all as the Big D. And this time around I bring to you a review of the 2000 comedy horror flick The Little Vampire. Directed by Uli Edel, released by New Line Cinema. Starring Jonathan Lipnicki, uh, from who had recently done Stuart Little a year before this. Along with Rollo Weeks, Richard E. Grant, Jim Carter, and Alice Krieg. The film's based on the book series of the same name by Angela Summer Bolenberg. The film's about a boy who tries to save a young vampire and his family from a ruthless vampire hunter in the hopes of making them become human. So, if you are ready, let's get into our story. Now, Jonathan Lipnicki, who I mentioned the previous year, played George in Stuart Little, and then a couple years later after this, its follow-up, plays a nine-year-old boy named Tony Thompson, and he moves with his family to Scotland, from California, where his family takes up residence in a small castle while his father is employed building a golf course on the estate of Lord McAshton. Since arriving in his new home, Tony has experienced recurring nightmares about vampires and a mysterious comet. Things also don't get any better for him at school as he gets picked on by Lord McAshton's grandsons Flint and Nigel. Soon, one night, while dressed up as a vampire, Tony is mistaken for one by a young vampire boy named Rudolph, who is on the run from an evil vampire hunter named Rookery. After realizing that Tony is not a vampire, Rudolph tries to attack him, but ultimately fails due to being weakened by Rookery. After trying to leave through Flying out the window, Rudolph falls from the sky due to his weakness. Tony helps him find a cow to feed from, and in return, Rudolph takes Tony flying. They quickly become friends, and Rudolph confides to Tony that his family only drank animal blood and wished to become human. So, Rudolph reveals that they are searching for a magical amulet that can be used to turn vampires into humans, but Rookery is also seeking to use the amulet against them. So Rudolph takes Tony to the cemetery where his family lives, but they are confronted by Rudolph's parents, Frederick and Frida, along with Rudolph's romantic sister Anna and rebellious teen brother Gregory. Frederick doubts Tony's loyalty to his son, but when Tony helps repel an attack from Rookery, Frederick begrudgingly allows Tony to help them. So, Tony and Rudolph then proceed to get revenge on Flint and Nigel, which I gotta tell you is really <laughs> a fun bit and what have you. So, anyway, let's get into more of this. Rookery alerts Lord McAshen to the presence of vampires in the village. Lord McAshen reveals that his family has known about the existence of vampires for generations. Elizabeth, an ancestor of Lord McAshen's, was romantically involved with Rudolph's uncle Vaughn, who was the last known holder of the amulet, and both lovers were killed by the McAshen's. Learning this, Tony, Rudolph, and Anna seek out Elizabeth's tomb, where Tony experiences a vision pointing out the location of the amulet, Tony's own bedroom. Yes. So, this is where the ending comes. So, you know what this means, folks. I'm going to give you five seconds to stop this video if you've not seen the movie, okay? 
to fat to go stop the video, go to the description box and fast forward to the time below to avoid any spoilers. If you have seen this, continue. Okay, you've been warned. Now, Rudolph and Tony race Rookery to the amulet, while the rest of Rudolph's family, along with Tony's parents, travel to the site of the ritual the vampires hope to perform. After a chase, Tony and Rudolph manage to escape with the amulet, while Rookery inadvertently drives his truck over a cliff and getting entangled in a blimp. Of course, they do get help from the cows, who are also now got the Got like a fly who are now flying. They got blood red eyes like vampire and things too, which that's really something. Anyway, Tony and Rudolph succeed in bringing Frederick the amulet, but the ceremony is interrupted by Rookery, who returns riding the blimp. But the vampires are unable to stand against Rookery's glowing cross, but Tony's parents defend them and defeat Rookery, push him off a cliff to his apparent death. Tony completes the ceremony by wishing for the vampires to become human. Rudolph and his family disappear as the comet passes, leaving Tony and his parents alone and unsure if the ceremony succeeded. Well, Sometime later, while visiting the village market, Tony spots Rudolph and his family, now human, moving into a house in the village. At first, they seem not to recognize Tony, but as Tony does the whistle, that Anna, well, well, got him to do to them, their memories return, and the friends are reunited in the story. Uh, yep. So, what did I think of the little vampire? Well, I will tell you, it was one of my guilty pleasures of a movie, yeah. Now, the film got mixed reviews, though, by critics, but unfortunately, the film was a major dud at the box office, as it only managed to make $28 million against its $35 million budget. Yeah, this didn't do so well. But again, this was a guilty pleasure. I, I loved watching this movie. I hadn't seen this in some time. I Last time I watched it was, like, I believe a couple of years ago on Movieplex, which, of course, was, um, a, well, it actually still is an affiliate to Stars and Encore, which is where I first saw watched the movie on Stars. But anyway... The story's real, really good, and the cast isn't too bad. I like the characters. I like Jonathan Lenicki's portrayal of Tony. The rest of our cast includes Richard E. Grant as Frederick, Jim Carter as Rookery, Alice Creek as Frida, Pamela Gidley as Dottie, Tony's mother, Tommy Hinckley as Bob, Tony's dad, Anna Popplewell as Anna, Dean Cook as Gregory, and Rollo Weeks as Rudolph. Of course, we have John Wood as Lord McAshton. Not too bad. But anyway, I'm going to say that this movie's kind of a bit of cute in ways. I mean, it's not that I ever get to see something like this. I mean, the first time we get to see a family-friendly film, and sometimes that's actually kind of fun in ways, but, oh well, but there have been many other fun flicks I feel are underrated. This film is kind of underrated in my book, The Little Vampire is. So, anyway, and, well, it had some music by Nigel Clark and Michael, I hope I'm pronouncing this, Sonny Willis. But anyway, that wasn't too bad, but I will say it had some pretty fun moments, especially when the cows start to become, well, the, well, help um, Tony and Rudolph out. <laughs> but that was really something. I mean, and when the farmer comes to check in on those, oh, wow. 
It's really something. So the question is, would I recommend The Little Vampire to y'all? Well, I would be leaning more towards, sure, go ahead. Give it a try. I think you might like it. I mean, and if not, well, I can't say I didn't try. I love this movie. It's it's pretty fun, and it's got a pretty good cast and what have you in the story. And again, the story's not too bad either. So, yeah, check into The Little Vampire. You might enjoy it, or you may not. We'll, well, you just be the judge, okay? Anyway, that's going to do it for my review of The Little Vampire. What were your thoughts on this movie? Please tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Now, that's going to do it for family stuff for now, but later in the week, I will be reviewing Hocus Pocus on Halloween Eve. But join me next time when I get back to some real horror, when I review Wes Craven's great classic, Scream. So thank you for watching my review of The Little Vampire, and if you like this, check out these other fun-filled well, spook your family flicks and what have you. Go to the upper left-hand corner for my spoiler-free review of the recent Netflix movie, A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting. Or, if you want a big set of movies, go to the upper right-hand corner for my big reviews of the Halloween Town Quadrilogy. Or, go to the bottom left-hand corner for my recent review of Casper. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.